Ladies and gentlemen, a snowy morning in Manhattan. What a picturesque New York setting here at the mecca of boxing, the infamous Madison Square Garden, where we've had so many incredible memories over the years. I'll never forget Prince Nassim Hamad's seven knockdown thriller against Kevin Kelly. Burnt was actually commentating alongside us uh, on that winter's night back in 1997. Vladimir knows this arena pretty well. He enjoyed a unification with Sultan Ibrahimov way back. And uh, it's great to see one of the iconic heavyweights of our era, a wonderful athlete and a longtime ruler. Vladimir back as he challenges the new generation, Britain's AJ, Anthony Joshua. 18 wins, 18 knockouts, and the IBF champion of the world. They lock horns in a battle of the ages for heavyweight legacy in front of a record 90,000 people at our national stadium back in London at Wembley. April the 29th, the date for your diaries. A multi-unification, a fantastic fight, and one that I hope everybody will really enjoy. The build-up is going to be immense. We've had a presser at Wembley, here we are in New York, and we'll have one in Germany in February too. I'd like to bring in uh, the man who's really been the, uh, the engine behind the Klitschko brothers, both Vitali and Vladimir, Bern Bonte, to say a few words. Bern. Yeah, thank you very much, Adam. It's uh, great to be back here at the garden where we had uh, uh, great fights for me as a journalist, but especially later with the Klitschko brothers. Vladimir has uh, fought here four times, uh, Vitali once. And uh, yeah, we have to thank uh, Joel Fisher and his uh, fantastic team for having us again here. And uh, now we have a way, way, way bigger arena in, in April, uh, Wembley Stadium, 90,000. This is the place uh, to be for, for this unbelievable fight. We're really looking forward to that and it's a promoter's dream fight. I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, the young, undefeated champion with a bright future on the one hand side and on the other hand side we have uh, Vladimir uh, who ruled the division for almost a decade and uh, is, uh, this fight will be his 29th world title fight. This is a world record in the heavyweight division. No other heavyweight ever had so many world title fights. And it's uh, also Vladimir's fight number eight in a soccer stadium. This is also pretty unique I would guess. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to a fantastic fight, a great audience and uh, great uh, TV stations, uh, uh, Sky as a partner, RTL as a partner, and we will sort out who will be the partner here in the US. And of all those memories you've got with working with the brothers, how excited and also how nervous are you ahead of this one on such a big stage where obviously Vladimir has such a huge point to prove pretty late on in his career? No, I'm very convinced. Uh, I'm very, very convinced. I know Vladimir needs this motivation. A couple of times he wasn't motivated. I know he's super motivated for this fight after the horrible year we had last year with uh, uh, back and forth uh, negotiations with uh, the Fury side. Uh, he's very, very motivated and I'm very, very convinced that he will join uh, three legends, Ali, Evander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis as the three-time heavyweight champion of the world. Thanks, Bert. Uh, let's bring uh, the man who's uh, been behind uh, AJ's rise uh, after his uh, Olympic gold when he turned professional in 2013, quickly uh, filling the O2 in record time. Uh, let's bring in Eddie Hearn to say a few words. Eddie. Thank you, Adam. And uh, thanks to everyone who's turned out today. So, as a boxing fan, it's an absolute honor and a privilege to be in the Madison Square Gardens. You've got some wonderful arenas all around the country, and of course, this is one of them. Um, our friends at, at the Barclay Centre as well, I haven't forgot you as well, don't worry. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here and it's a pleasure to be involved with a fight I believe is the biggest fight in British boxing history. 29th world title fight for Vladimir Klitschko. Guess what? It's just Anthony's 19th professional fight. It would be so easy the way that Anthony Joshua breaks records at the box office, breaks records on gate receipts, to just do what every other fighter and promoter would have done, which is keep winning, keep going through the gears, keep knocking out people like Dominic Brazil and Eric Molina. That's not what Anthony Joshua is about. 
uh, in his 19th fight, stepping up into a unification fight against one of the legends of the heavyweight division in Vladimir Klitschko. But isn't that what boxing's all about? Isn't that what sport's all about? We want to create nights, create moments that people will never, ever forget. 90,000 people in an outdoor stadium watching, I believe, the biggest star in world boxing in Anthony Joshua against the heavyweight legend in Vladimir Klitschko. I'm so excited as a fan. Is it too early for Anthony Joshua? How much does Vladimir Klitschko have left? We know he's a very determined man. And I believe this young man here is going to be the biggest thing that boxing's seen in many, many years. He's got speed. He's got power. He's got a smile that could melt the hearts of women all over the world. <laughs> And he gets embarrassed when I talk about him sometimes like that, but I don't care. <laughs> because I tell you, he's a great man, a great star, and we're expecting a huge, huge night of boxing as well. It's an absolute pleasure to deal with Bernd Bonte and Vladimir Klitschko. No games. We just want to put on a great fight for the fans, for Klitschko and Joshua, and for our partners all around the world. It's what it's all about. As you saw in the promo, the world will stop on April the 29th when these two gladiators, huge men, with huge skill and huge heart take, take place in the ring in our national stadium and we can't wait. And this is just the beginning of seeing us and Anthony Joshua in America. We've got plans to come here as well. And uh, first we must get past the biggest test by far of his career on April 29th. Eddie, you mentioned it in there. I was going to ask you, is it too early for Anthony Joshua? It's a massive uh, leap up from where he's been. Obviously, Charles Martin, Dominic Brazil, and then Molina at the end of the year, but this is a guy that's reigned supreme for 10 years and, and has proved everything to heavyweight boxing. You really, in your heart of hearts, believe Anthony's ready for this? This, this fight is too early for Anthony Joshua. That's, that's what everybody says. That's what the common sense says. This is the 19th fight of his career. Look at the, the opponents he's beaten. They told us we shouldn't fight for the World Heavyweight Championship uh, in the 16th fight against Charles Martin. They knocked him out in two rounds, and all of a sudden, Charles Martin was just terrible. You know, Eric Molina went nine rounds with Deontay Wilder. Joshua knocked him out in three rounds. And he, was just, he was just terrible. So we don't really get the respect until he gets involved in fights like this. Is it too early? We'll see. That's what makes it so exciting. If Anthony Joshua is not what we think he is, he won't beat Vladimir Klitschko. If he is, you're going to see an incredible performance of speed and power and a man that will stand in front of you and let his hands go at frightening pace, but we're going to find out. The world is going to find out, and it will be the crowning, I believe, of the new worldwide star of boxing. Thanks very much, Eddie. We've been watching Vladimir even before he won that Olympic gold medal back in 1996, 20 years uh, in the professional game. Uh, he's been unbelievable to be around, um, both on the television side and I'm sure for all the fans that he's He's lit up around the world. He's been a wonderful uh, role model alongside his brother. Um, but I know that there's something burning deep inside, and that is to become a three-weight champion, as Burton was saying, a three-time heavyweight champion, following those, those names, uh, those great names in the past. Um, Vladimir, how spurred on are you by the challenge of the young lion, the man that you rate as possibly the one to take over your mantle? but maybe not yet. Thank you for your introduction. And good day, New York. Good day, Madison Square Garden. It's great to be back here. And I'm still around. <laughs> it's amazing. And I just, you know, sitting here and listening to all of you guys. Um, and in a certain way, it's a deja vu. Because that deja vu started in year 2000 when I was fighting here in undercard when Lennox Lewis was fighting Michael Grant. It was 2000. Anthony Joshua was 10. <laughs> it's crazy, yeah? If you think about time, how fast time runs. I remember I was here in New York for my biggest challenge so far after failure. And coming back, I was fighting Samuel Peter, Niger Nigerian nightmare. His promoter called me dead man walking. So that dead man <clears throat> kept walking for 
a very long time. And I understand and know why this press conference here in New York, even if we don't fight here at the Garden or in New York or in the States, so this fight is going to be in London, but I know there are going to be a lot of fans watching. I don't know which channel is going to, going to broadcast in the States or watching it in the arena and going to come to Wembley, which is pretty much amazing as a big stage, probably the biggest stage I ever fought. Byrne just mentioned I fought in a couple of stadiums and I fought in the front of 30 and 40 and 50 and 60,000 people, but never in the front of 90,000 people. That's my biggest arena. This is to me going to be our to, uh, same biggest fight. I'm fighting a man that I was, is, and will be a fan of since I watched Anton Joshua winning the Olympic gold in 2012. I was right there in the arena, and uh, it was amazing to watch that some, somebody's following in your footsteps. We had uh, plenty of rounds during sparring sessions 2014 when Anthony was my sparring partner for my fight against uh, Kubrat Pulev. I believe this man has a lot of skills. And as Eddie said, you know, he's going to be the biggest uh, star in boxing. Maybe yes, maybe not. I hope you made another f a lot of um, or enough plans also to fight uh, Wilder past me or other opponents. So I understand the plans and understand the ambitious, and it's good to be young and ambitious. In this case, I'm talking both about you, about Anthony and uh, Eddie. And I believe that this fight is magnetizing audience because there's a lot of questions. And I just talked to a couple of you guys, and you asked me questions like, so how's that going to be? Is it too early for Anthony? Is it too late for you? There's a lot of questions that I've heard. How Anthony is going to handle it? How he's going to handle somebody that is not afraid or have any fear standing <clears throat> in the ring? How is he going to handle if he's going to fight a pace that he is not controlling? How is he going to feel if he needs to fight, go backwards? How is he going to feel if he's going to get hit again and again and again and again and again? So all these questions, how I'm going to handle it? Still I got it, or it's too late? All those questions are going to be answered on April 29th at Wembley Stadium. I'm looking forward to this challenge. I have my goal to become three-time world champion. My motivation is high as the sky. My allies and my team because there were a lot of questions, why did I lose those titles? Maybe somebody in the family, in the team, there's like always some names were brought up, maybe it's not good, or your coach is too young, or your physiotherapist is not good, or whatever. No, everything is going to remain the same, just the end of the fight will be different. And I'm strongly believing it. I am, and I repeat it one more time, this word, obsessed with my goal to become three-time world champion. An obsession means love. I do it with love. And I know how serious my opposition is, and I'm happy to give to the fans that have great patience seeing me back in the ring again. Ladies and gentlemen, I will not lose too many words here. And I just want to tell you, buckle up in the front of the TVs, because you're going to be really emotional, or at the seats, at the Wembley Stadium, just watch it. And it's going to be an amazing event and a great fight. Obviously, I will need to pass the word to the champ. Now I'm a challenger. All the respect and good luck in the preparation to all what is going to 
come, gonna come up as a challenge to handle it well. So thank you for attention and AJ, go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> I'm feeling the jet lag a bit, so excuse me <laughs> if I'm lost for words, but first and foremost. Did I put you asleep already <laughs> no, with my no, long no, speech? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. It's interesting because this now is all about the mind, mind games. No, 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 this is not mind games. <laughs> it's all about the mind. It's all about the mind. But as we know, I'm a man who likes to perform. The obsession has always been there for me and far beyond boxing because it starts with self. Boxing is a representation of who I am. But when you look beyond that, a man who is disciplined, determined, and obsessed with life in general and becoming a better person will always reflect in what he represents. So that's where my obsession lies, is within myself. And it is that journey, that young lion that's ambitious and wants to take on the world. And anyone that's coming up, I'll always look at that person and say, you know, I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of time and respect for that person because they can create their own destiny. Why I mention destiny is because I feel the questions are, is, as you said, is it too soon? Uh, what type of audience has he fought in, uh, in front of before? And what type of opponents has he faced? Is it too soon? But I feel whatever occasion I've been put in front of in, in my early stages of my career, I've always overcome. And people say, um, how do you feel about fighting in front of 90,000 people? Uh, could you ever picture it? And I say, no, it's not that, I, not that I couldn't picture it, but I don't think God would ever put me in a position that I couldn't handle. So I'm here for a reason, and I'll handle business the same way I've been handling business. And even though we're in front of 90,000 people and the world watches, the objective still remains the same, and that's to be victorious. Anthony, there's obviously a great deal of respect between you and Vladimir. We saw last week with Carl Frampton and then Leo Santa Cruz that you can have that outside of the ring and then yeah, yeah. go to war in, inside it. You're of the same sort of philosophy. That's how you're conducting your business? Yeah, most definitely. It's hard because people say, oh, you're coming to a different market now. You're in the States, man. You've got you to have a bit of swagger. you got to... <laughs> Go back, to that, go back to the roots and do this. And I say, you know what, you're right. I want to capture the audience of the people. But then I look back at myself when I look in the mirror and I say, what's got me here? And that's being true to myself. So for sure, I would love to capture the attention of the audience. But love me or hate me, I think it's always important to be true to yourself. And, and that's what's important for me um, as a representation of, of myself and what I do. Yeah, I just, I'll be happy to look in the mirror and just say, you know what, I've done my part for boxing. I'm doing my part for who I who I am and what I stand for. And what does it mean to you to be in front of the US media here in New York? I know you, you won't want to look past April the 29th, mm. but obviously to make it in America and, and bigger fights, if there are bigger than 90,000 at Wembley against Vladimir Klitschko down the line, you'd obviously love to come here, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's the mecca of boxing. It's the mecca of boxing. And this is where I think naturally you gravitate towards is America. But... Um, it's unbelievable being here, but I never try to put too much emphasis on, on, on I need to get to America, or I need to get to Africa, or I need to get to the Asian market. Um, what I need to do is win. And when that happens, naturally you gravitate to all these beautiful places where boxing can take you. So it is great, and, I, and I'm so honored that everyone's come out. And I've, never, I've been to America when I was younger. I, I went to Vegas when I was 19 to fight, and um, I didn't get to see anything because I was obviously too young. Um, this is my second time here. And it's a pleasure. But without winning, I wouldn't be here. So that's why I always say winning is important, not so much how am I going to capture the audience and what are my targets when I'm here. Without winning, none of this is possible. So I always withdraw back to keeping it calm and focusing on making it simple and what's important for me. Vladimir keeps mentioning the word obsession. Is that something that you just relate to hugely? It is obsessive for you to win this fight and to continue your, your rise and your journey that you always talk about, the fact that, you know, it's, it's one thing after the next. Yeah. As I said, it's about myself. It's about myself. The same, the same elbow grease that I used in 2016 won't get me through 2017. You know, um, the same training methods I used in 2016 only led me to defeat the opponents that I took on in 2016. This is a new, a new year for me. So for sure, that obsession is still burning and I don't think it will stop because as I said before um, it's not it's I'm a representation of boxing who I am is an ambitious person deep 
in tune with myself. They always say, know thyself. And I'm definitely in tune with who I am and what I'm trying to achieve in this short life I have. So, um, and that will reflect out in boxing. So 2017 shall be the new and improved me. Not for any particular reason, because I can't tell you, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But just the way I am in tune with myself, I for sure will be new and improved. Thanks, Anthony. Let's uh, open it up. And uh, here's some questions from, uh, from all of our American friends. And there are many of us here today. It's uh, great to see you all. What a terrific turnout. Who wants to ask the first one? Uh, question for Anthony. This is Mike Hoppinger from USA Today. Um, you know, considering your opposition so far, do you feel that this could be too much too soon with the Klitschko fight? Or do you feel it's just right? I think it's just right. When I look back and people are saying to me, like in my fifth fight, when you're going to fight Klitschko or Fury or Wilder, because these guys have been pro for so many years. Um, I thought maybe Klitschko wouldn't be here, so I'd, I'd always distance myself from that. But I'd, I'd always say, give me three years. Give me three years. And I've been in the game three years now. So it's like I had that vision before I got here. So for sure, it may seem soon to people, but it's like for me, it's like a, an Olympic uh, an Olympic part, the four-year gap. So 2013 to 2017 has been my next Olympic cycle. So this is maybe my gold medal fight once again. So no problem at all. I'm just going through that same Olympic cycle, that same four-year period that we go through to fight for a championship. Um, and yeah, I've had 19 fights. We've been on a row. And it doesn't seem a lot, but from what I've learned through fighting, sparring, and as a person, I throw all these different things into the mix and yeah, it should prepare me for all these things when I step in the ring because um, fighting isn't just about, you know, one-on-one -on -one in the ring. As you said, there's mind games, there's the crowd you've got to deal with, there's things that go on in your personal life away from training. So I've learned how to deal with these things and manage these things and I should be in a really good place come April 29th. I don't know why is it always a topic, seriously. I'm like, the truth, the yeah. naked truth, <laughs> there's no mind game. But, you know, I just want to add to what you said and actually asked. I think it's a perfect time for both of us. In three years, he's going to be too good. <laughs> and I'm going to be too old, maybe. But this is the time. And we just got it in the right time. And it's definitely a signature fight for boxing, period. Because I love that we're sitting here and we can have a healthy and normal conversation with each other. In this crazy world, with all the wars and all the controversies and all of that, it's amazing to see in such a competitive sport as boxing, where actually we will demolish each other in the ring afterwards, but we're respectful to each other, we're respectful to the sport and to the fans, and you know what? It pays off. It pays off because that's going to polish this amazing sweet science. Thank you. No Question for Vladimir. This is Michael Woods writing for Everlasting Ring. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Vladimir, we say for the fans, there is a question of what's going to happen. Is it too early for Mr. Joshua? Is it too late for you? I'm wondering in your own mind right now on paper, how certain are you that you have enough left to beat Mr. Joshua? Or will it question only be answered in the ring that night? You didn't listen to me. I just said it's perfect time. It's perfect, because in three years I'll be too old, probably, and Anthony's going to be too good. So it's equal. It's perfect. The timing is right. Question for, question for uh, Vladimir. Uh, Bernd mentioned in the beginning of the press conference last year was not a good year, so cancellations. What kind of vindication is that your comeback fight is on such a huge scale. This is, to me, it's something that I've never been before, as I said, um, with the amount of people being involved, fans at the stadium, um, my opponent. I, I will answer this question to you. It's, it's not early for, for Anthony to fight me. Think about Mike Tyson becoming the youngest, with 20 years old. I mean, 20, it's a kid to become world champion. So it's, it's definitely, I think it should not be a question if, if it's too early for Anthony to fight me. The, the arena is, is the biggest stage 
I had, and I believe the same is with Anthony, and I think for a lot of fans around the world, I definitely think this fight is magnificent, and it's extravaganza in sport of boxing, and uh, believe it or not, but probably, not probably, it's for sure going to, into the books of history. I don't know if in the recent history there was such a big um, fight in England. Not in the century, for sure. So it's all, it's, all, it's all exciting, and it's all historical, and it's great. And uh, I, I, as a fan, really excited about, excited about it um, to see two Olympic champions fight each other. I've been fighting Olympic champions. Um, it's Atlantic City, um, Ray Mercer, and I've been fighting um, Olympic champion from 2004, if I'm not wrong, Povetkin, and so this is another challenge for me. So this is third Olympic champion to fight, and it's something that is really exciting, and I, and I love it. And I've been always supportive of uh, Olympic sports and boxing and professional boxing and amateur boxing, uh, involved in it and cooperate with each other and work with each other, and uh, because it's all about the fans, and I think fans are getting what they were looking for. Okay. Hi, uh, Eddie Goldman from No Holds Barred. Question for both Vladimir and Anthony. Uh, Vladimir, in your last fight with Tyson Fury, I know you were disappointed, and you've said numerous times that you felt like you made a mistake. Can you explain e exactly what that was? And also for Anthony, what did you take from Vladimir's last fight with Tyson Fury that you can apply to your fight? Thank you. I'm... Uh Probably, it, it doesn't make sense to talk about the past. Whatever was done is done, and uh, it's good. I, I believe it's good that I lost because I do look different to the things and to my motivation as well, because health and motivation is two important issues to me, to continue fighting and standing in the ring, nothing else but health and motivation. So I'm highly motivated, and thank God I have uh, enough health to perf perform and uh, be ready, even if going to be 41 on um, April 29th. But that uh, really doesn't matter. So I'm looking forward to this challenge, and I'm not looking to the past. And uh, whatever the past brought to me, experience and, and motivation works for me today. Thanks. Um, question, G uh, Gareth Davis from uh, you, AJ. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, AJ. Yeah, all I can really take from it, if I'm honest with you, is that um, I'm going to face probably the best Vladimir Klitschko since that fight. Um, due to the fact that through people's failures, sometimes it become their greatest success. So what you got wrong, you can really look at, or maybe it was just a fluke. Whatever you got wrong, you can really look at and get right. And as I said, it will be the best Klitschko. So it's good for me. So I won't be complacent. I'll sleep about the fight. I'll wake up about the fight. So when the fight comes and I do what I have to do in routine to the ordinary eye it will look as if AJ's just done what he does normally but they won't know the due diligence I've put into winning this fight due to the fact that I know I'll be facing the best Vladimir Klitschko. The Telegraph in, in London. Can I, can I ask uh, Anthony, um, obviously it's about conquering individuals for you but, but just to kind of explain a little bit more, you know you're here in New York, how important is it for you to conquer different markets as well because you know, um, without being rude to Vladimir, he didn't ever really conquer the American market, if you like, as perhaps he'd like to have done. Um, and, you know, heavy, heavyweights from Europe haven't conquered the US market for a long time in that sense. Um, and there seems to be a thing for British boxers or European boxers that if they're successful in America, they've actually genuinely become globally successful. How important is that to you and being here today and doing that? Maybe it's not meant to be. But what I see at the minute is that a lot of American fighters are happy to travel to UK as well. So there's a bit of a mix for sure. The market industry is always good for people who I work with in PR, management, uh, marketing. That's great. They have all the strategies about different markets and so on. But as you said, when I strip all that away, I'm a fighter. And winning takes you to these places. And if my career is meant to be based in Great Britain or America or these other territories, then so be it. But... As I said, when you strip it all away, um, no matter where you are, the ring remains the same and the, and the result remains the same. So uh, 
it is great to tap into these markets, but I think it's better for the people who do the brand management and the marketing strategies. But my mind should just stay on whether I fight in a car park or whether I fight in Wembley Stadium, I should prepare the best way possible. The car um, parks, uh, we don't go there. Anymore. But you get, you get a point. <laughs> <laughs> you um, get a point. <laughs> same question for both Vladimir and Eddie. Vladimir first, please. Is this the biggest heavyweight title fight since uh, Lewis Tyson? And if not, what, what would you put ahead of this? It's, it's tough to say if it's the biggest. Let's, let us make the fight first, and then we'll see how it goes. And uh, probably it's tough to judge. I will speak for myself. It's tough to judge. Uh, is it bigger? Or that means I'm probably going to disrespect Tyson Lewis' fight if I'm going to say this is bigger. So all of those events were amazing for boxing. And I have a lot of respects for both the fighters putting it together and stand in the ring and fight each other because you cannot take down um, from anyone the, the, the performance because you cannot dance alone, so you need an opponent. So that was, that was, that was a great, great match, and um, I was there observing it, and uh, I was at the arena for that fight. So let's, let us make the fight, and then, we, then you guys are actually going to say, was it the same or was it better? So that's probably judgment from the critiques and the press and, and the fans. Yeah, this is the biggest, you know, since then, because there haven't really been a lot of big heavyweight fights. Yeah, I think I, I can only give you the stats, which the stats are when the... I have to thank the Mayor of London as well, actually. We, we sold 85,000 tickets, and he was uh, kind enough to speak to the transport networks, put on extra uh, trains and and uh, transportation for the public to increase that to 90,000. It's the biggest post-war crowd ever in Britain. But I think to give you an idea, when the final ticket was sold, the 84,999th, there was 36,000 people remaining in the online queue to purchase tickets. So quite simply, in relation to the averages, we could have sold out Wembley Stadium twice without any problem at all. So in that respect, this is by far the biggest fight ever to take place in Great Britain. And I believe the fascination that will resonate with fans around the world will mean this is the biggest heavyweight fight for some time. Okay, well, in and your I opinion... Can, I can also add um, to, to what Eddie said, uh, to give you an idea, the fight, uh, and I think this fight is way bigger, the fight uh, between Vladimir and David Hay had over 16 million viewers only in Germany. 16 million, yeah, and uh, I think that tells you a little bit about the magnitude of, of great fights in, in Europe, and I think we're also expecting uh, great things on the pay-per-view basis in, in England, so all over, it's, it's a fantastic fight, and also our, our international marketer, IMG, already told us this is by far the biggest boxing fight they have marketed and this is the biggest sports marketing agency in the world, as you guys know. And yeah, just a quick follow-up for both uh, you and Eddie. It's also been a really long time since there was a great high-profile championship, heavyweight championship fight, you know, in the ring. So you think, you know, I think maybe the last one was Vitaly Klitschko versus Lennox Lewis. Can, can this fight deliver that? In Depend, terms of the fight, in, the fight, in terms of the numbers. In terms of the action in the ring. Yeah, I believe so. I mean, uh, yeah. you, you, you just got to watch Anthony Joshua's showreel. You know, he doesn't, he, he likes to entertain, he likes to let his hands go. And he has incredible speed and power. Vladimir Klitschko knows what he's doing. And, uh, you know, he's been around a long time. It's a, it's, it's a fascinating matchup. That's what it is. It's not two guys who are, you know, 19 and 0, 20 and 0. It, it's, it's one guy who many see as the future of, of worldwide boxing and the star of the heavyweight division against a legend of the heavyweight division who's dominated for years and years and years. And I think the action, you will never see a dull Anthony Joshua fight. Simple as that. Doesn't, and, and it doesn't matter who's in the other corner. You will just not see one. I think there's a nice quote by Herb Brooks. You all know the late, great hockey coach. He said, great moments are born out of great opportunities. And this, this is the fight for it. Um, whether or not uh, Vladimir is playing mind games is really irrelevant, right? I mean, this is a mental game and a mental sport, and you need to have your mind right. How do you approach, which is essentially for you a home game, right? It's a, it, it's a home boxing match. So mind-wise, how do you prepare yourself when you're fighting in front of your home fans? How does one prepare themselves? Um, it's like what we're doing now. We're, we're talking about the fight. 
for, for, for months, this fight has been spoken about. So naturally, it's on your mind, so you're preparing for these things. Have you ever fought in front of 90,000 people? So you naturally start saying to yourself, how will I deal with 90,000 people? So you mentally start preparing yourself, and that's the way you do it mentally, really. As you said, I'm not, it's, it isn't mind games, but it is a mental game for sure, because athletes train. The neck down, phenomenal. Every athlete's fit, but it's from the neck up what separates people. So for sure, that's why you have to be well in tune with what's going on up there. And um, as you said, dealing with the pressures and so on and so forth, naturally, you know, you, you, you fine tune yourself on how you're going to deal with the fight as it approaches. And you step into the ring and naturally things just happen. Things will just happen naturally in that ring. And um, that's the best way I can say I'll deal with it mentally is let things happen naturally. Because over the last few months or a year or so, Naturally, I've been absorbing the information and listening to people talk, and I'm just dissecting it the best way possible, and it will all come out on April 29th. Adam, I think we're good. Yeah. Okay, we're going to pose for uh, some photos uh, if you guys come up. Uh, but April the 29th at Wembley, 90,000 people. <laughs>